the National Broadcasting Company presents Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 13. play tonight is titled The Dark Hour. It is an original radio drama by Charles Bennett, and one which we like very much indeed. We sincerely hope that after 30 minutes have elapsed, you will share our opinion. The production is directed by Harry W. Junkin, and stars John Larkin as Paul. Here is Radio City Playhouse, Attraction 13, The Dark Hour. <laughs> This is a story about Paul, Paul Gallagher. It is a story about Paul when something happens to him. It is the story of the fears and thoughts within him when it happens. And it is the story of the voice that speaks these thoughts. It is not, we think, an ordinary story. Paul won't tell very many people about this. I say won't, because it hasn't happened yet. It is just now beginning to happen. lying on the ground asleep. He is on a summer vacation. This afternoon, he went for a walk by himself along a dirt road that winds through the woods, about a mile from his family's summer cottage. It's a lonely road, never much traffic on it, but Paul knows it well. He's been on it dozens of times every summer of his life, except while he was away in the army. Wake up, Paul. Open your eyes. He is stretched out flat on his back, lying still, except for his breathing, which is slow and regular and gentle. Where is he? Well, after walking a while, he stepped off the road through an opening in the brush and into a familiar clearing in the woods. It was warm and peaceful, and he lay down on his back and gazed through the rippling treetops at the patch of blue sky above him. And without meaning to, Paul Gallagher fell asleep. That's where he is now. Do you hear me, Paul? You are waking up. That's right, Paul. Move. Stretch. <sighs> Open your eyes. <clears throat> Listen, Paul. Listen deep within you. I am you, Paul. <sighs> You've heard me before, haven't you? No. I am you. You'd better wake up, Paul. Do you hear me? Yes. Then open your eyes, Paul. Open your eyes. <gasps> What's the matter? Where am I? Dark. Dark. Pitch dark. Pitch dark. Call out for help. Where? Where? Oh. What's the matter, Paul? Frightened? Only for a moment, I... Remember now, Paul. Remember where you are. Yes, I'm lying on a little patch of grass and moss in the woods. Right where you lay down this afternoon, Paul? I remember. What time did you go to sleep, Paul? Oh, about uh, three o'clock, I guess. And now it's pitch dark. Black dark, isn't it? Better make very sure where you are. Put your hands out and feel the ground around you. Yes, it's moss and grass, all right. Well, at least you know where you are. <laughs> oh, of all the screwball things to do, sleeping all this time. What time is it, Paul? It's... Well, I can't see my watch. Light a match. I... Well, I guess I haven't any matches. In summer, the twilight lasts until around nine o'clock. It's so dark now you can't see a thing, can you? <laughs> Boy, this is one for the books. You must have been very tired, Paul. Yes, I must have been very tired. Tired enough to fall asleep accidentally and sleep for seven hours, maybe more? I didn't know I was that tired. 
When they discharged you from that army hospital, what did they tell you? Oh, that was a long time ago, two years. What did they tell you, Paul? Nothing. What did they tell you? Well, they said, take it easy, be careful. Why did they say that? Why, Paul? Why, Paul? I had a rough trip getting up here for my vacation, that long, hot train ride, sitting up all night for two nights. It's very tiring. Or maybe it's a change of climate. This fresh northern air just knocked you out. Yes, that must be it. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? Paul, get up. You can't just lie there. Sit up. Yeah, I am. That's right. Brush the grass and twigs from the sweater. What's the matter? Nothing. Why are you rubbing the side of your face, Paul? Skin is all dented. I oh, slept with my face pressing right into the grass, I guess, and that... What's the matter, Paul? Why are you rubbing your temple with your finger? What's the matter, Paul? My scar. Stinging like a needle. Ah, uh, the twig must have been digging into it while I was asleep. You'd better be getting home. Yes. Stand up. Yeah, I'm standing. What are you waiting for? I... I don't know which way to go. It's so dark. I've never known it to be so dark before. Why, I can't even tell where the trees end and the sky begins up there. Probably it clouded over while you were asleep, Paul. Yeah, that's it. You're not afraid of the dark. Think, Paul. Think how often you walked home along that road in the dark when you were a kid. You can do it again. Of course I can do it again. The first thing is to get out of the clearing onto the road. Figure it out. Now, let's see. I came in, went over to the old tree, and then... Well, the opening must be in this direction. Which way, Paul? This way. Go on, Paul. Stretch out your arms in front of you. Step forward. Step, step, step. What's the matter? I should have reached the edge of the clearing by now, one way or another. Do you feel anything yet? No. Maybe you hit the exit from the clearing right on the button the first time. Yeah, maybe I did. Step forward, then. <laughs> What happened? I... I don't know. Something slapped me in the face. Put out your hand and see what it was. No. Go on. What? Oh. It's only a leaf. A little branch hanging down over my head. <laughs> you missed the opening. Well, how am I going to get out of here? Suppose a car went by on the road outside the clearing. Why, then... Then you would know where the exit is. Yes. But... How often do cars go by on that road? Uh, it might be hours before one went by. I don't want to wait. I want to get out of here. Take it easy, Paul. All right. Think, Paul. Think. I know. What, Paul? A branch. Good, Paul. That's right. Grab it. <laughs> there. Now pull it down. <laughs> go on. Twist it. <laughs> twist there. The branch broke off right into your hand, didn't it? Yeah. Now what, Paul? Yeah, the twigs. That's right, Paul. Strip off the twigs and the leaves, all of them. There. Now. What have you got now, Paul? A stick. Now I can feel where I'm going. Good. Which way are you going to try? Left, I think. Yes, left. Is that the opening? Wait, I... I'm walking on leaves. What does that mean? Well, I must be going into the woods instead of out by the opening. Then do something. I... Back up. Back out of there. Now go on, Paul. To the left. Keep at it, Paul. I might go deeper into the woods. Keep at it, Paul. Wait. What, Paul? Wait, I think I... Why are you stopping, Paul? I've made it. I'm out. 
I'm through the opening and out by the road. How do you know? I know it. I can feel it. I can, I can, I can feel more space around me. Better be sure. Use the stick. Step forward, Paul. Slowly. 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 Watch out for the <laughs> stick, Paul. Well, Paul, you had to step over that roadside ditch when you entered the clearing before falling asleep, didn't you? Remember now? You saw the water in it and the mud and the wet leaves then, didn't you? Get up. Get to your feet. Go on, Paul. There. You should be standing by the side of the road now. Stop trembling. That ditch. A lousy, rotten, foul, misbegotten, accursed ditch. Paul? I forgot the ditch. Lousy, rotten ditch. Calm down, Paul. Shake the mud off your clothes. Where is your sense of proportion? <laughs> this sure as blazes isn't my night, is it? You'd better get going. Yes. What are you waiting for, Paul? You know, when I was a kid and walked home on this road at night, even on the darkest nights, the sky was just faintly lighter than the woods. It made a sort of canyon of the road that you could follow easy. You, you couldn't see the road, but some kind of visual sense let you know what it was. But not tonight, Paul. Tonight? Tonight I can't see a blessed thing. It's the darkest night I've ever seen. It's black. I... I don't know. I... Are you nervous? Yes. Yes, I am. In what way? I... I don't quite know. I can't quite... quite figure it out. In my stomach. Sick. Do you feel something strange? Something wrong? Yes. Have you ever felt it before, Paul? No. Never? No. How about the war, Paul? No. Remember the war, Paul? No, no. Yes, yes, Paul. You have felt like this before. No, never. Oh, yes, Paul. Think. Think about it. Remember it. No. Stop. Leave me alone. The war, Paul. The war. The war. The war. Hey, Mac. Yeah? Mac, listen. Yeah, Paul, I'm listening. I... Oh, never mind, it's nothing. Hey, what's eating you? You look like you're ready for your shroud. Oh, it's nothing. Parking your frame in this lousy trench giving you the willies, huh? Well, I... Hey, what is the matter with you? Well, it's... Look, Mac, do me a favor, will you? Yeah? Here. Here's my wallet and some other stuff. What? Now, keep them for me, will you? And then if you... Well, if you have to, you'll know what to do with them. Oh, no. Oh, wait a sec, Paul. Sure, I'll keep them if you want, but you're just putting the whammy on yourself. No, no, I, I, I just got a feeling, that's all. Today is it, the ticket, the one with the label on it, and all that junk. I wish I could be funny about it, but I just feel so rotten, lousy, bad. You want to talk to the chaplain, maybe? No, no, I've talked to him. Thanks. Look at me, Mac. Look right at me. Yeah? I'm scared. But I'm not just scared. I know it's going to happen. I can feel it all through me. You understand me, Mac? I know it. Know it. Paul, steady, Paul. You're still standing by the side of the road. Is that the way you feel again? Ah, leave me alone. I don't remember. All right, Paul. All right. I'd better relax. You'd better get going, Paul. Yes, but how am I going to stay on the road if I can't see it? Figure it out. What kind of a road is it? Why, it's an ordinary dirt road. And? It... Yes. Yes, I see. Car wheels throw most of the dirt and gravel to the side. 
And that leaves hard, bare tracks in the center. And? And and all I have to do is feel for a hard, bare part with my feet, and it'll be like a track to follow. If I feel myself walking in loose gravel, I'll I'll know I'm getting on the shoulder off the road. Good for you, Paul. Yeah, now I'm getting smart. There. There's a bare track. Turn to your right, Paul. Start walking. Walk, Paul. I'm walking. Soon you won't have to concentrate so hard on feeling the road through your feet. Soon your feet will keep to the road almost automatically. Soon you won't... What is it, Paul? My wound. A scar. It's stinging again. Your scar? Oh, what's the matter with it anyway? It hasn't bothered you for a long time, has it? No. Now it's stinging. It goes right through my head. Is that why you're holding your head in your hands? Steady, Paul. What are you thinking of, Paul? The war again? Oh, I'm dizzy. Why are you thinking of the war again, Paul? And did you help it? Oh, oh, I'm dizzy. Steady, Paul. Steady, Paul. What time is it, Paul? 3.16. The 219th is supposed to attack that hill over there soon. That should divert some of this fire from us, huh? Yeah, Mac. What time did you say it was, Paul? 3.16. What time is it now? Look, how many rotten times do I have to tell you? Oh! You all right, Paul? Hey, are you... Paul! I saw it coming here, Paul. Paul, that's bad. Walk, Paul. I'm walking. Are you all right now? Yes, yes, I'm all right. What's the matter with your head, Paul? I don't know. My wound. What was it? Shrapnel. What do you remember about it? Remember? Yes. Don't you remember anything about your wound? No. It's all fixed up now. Don't you remember the hospital? The hospital? Yes. What did they do in the hospital? Do? What did they do? They fixed it up. They fixed up the wound. Don't you remember? What? Where is your wound, Paul? It's in my head. Where in your head? My temple. Where? My temple. Say it again. My temple. Is that a bad place to be wounded, Paul? Is that a bad place, Paul? What did they do in the hospital, Paul? Do you remember now, Paul? The hospital, the hospital. Hello. You're Paul Gallagher, aren't you? Uh, That's right. Every time I turn over comes a new nurse. Are you new on this ship? No. No, I'm not on the ward. Oh. Well, hello anyway. We're ready for you now, Paul. You ready for me? Yes. For what? What gives? Why, for your operation, of course. Operation? Why, yes. Didn't anyone tell you? No. No, they didn't. So that's what all that fussing with me was about last night and this morning. Oh, great. Isn't that just like the army? Not say a rotten thing. Why do they have to operate? Why, I, I don't know. Oh, it's practically healed. I thought it was perfectly all right. What's the matter with it? Come on, Paul. They're waiting for you. Here, put on your slippers. Look, isn't it healing properly? What's wrong with it, nurse? Come on, Paul. We can't keep them waiting. Well, can't you tell me? What's the matter? All right, Paul. I'm going to put this over your face. There. Now, breathe deeply. That's right. Take deep breaths. 
What's this one, Doctor? Small piece of shrapnel in the temple. Uh, Seemed all right at first. We'll let it heal without taking it out. Ready, nurse? Just a minute, Doctor. So, what's the matter now? Danger of pressure on the optic nerve. It's going to be a tricky business. Mm Mm-hmm. Any chance of loss of vision? A chance, yes. I don't think so, but he could be all right tomorrow and then sometime later. I just can't tell now. Yes, blindness is unlikely, but perfectly possible. Any chance loss of vision? Perfectly possible. Perfectly possible. Perfectly possible. must have slept back there with my scar pressing on a twig or a small stone or something. Pressed on a nerve, probably. That's what makes it sting so. That's probably it. Dark, isn't it? Look up, Paul. Look up to the sky. Do you see anything, Paul? I ought to be able to see something, shouldn't I? It's uncanny, isn't it? No, it's clouded over, that's all. It's clouded over. You're all alone in the dark, and it feels hollow and tight in the pit of your stomach. Well, that's natural. That's perfectly natural. Oh, Paul. It's so dark. It couldn't be any worse, could it, if you were blind? How do you know you're not blind, Paul? How do you know it's a very dark night? How do you know it isn't about four o'clock in the afternoon? How do you know you didn't fall asleep with two good eyes and wake up blind? What did the doctors say? Why is there a pain in your temple? Oh, I'm crazy. I'm absolutely crazy. On the other hand, Paul, why should you be blind? The doctors... They said it was possible, didn't they? Did they say it was probable? No. Why shouldn't it be a dark night? It could be. Why shouldn't you sleep several hours? I was very tired. It's not very likely that you're blind, is it? No, it's not very likely. Figure it out, then. What haven't you done all this time? What haven't I done? Your ears. My ears? Yes. Listen. What's that? It's just the breeze in the trees up there. And that? Crickets and and insects. What about birds? Birds? If you heard birds singing, it wouldn't be nighttime, would it? What was that? What? Didn't you hear it? Sounded like a robin, didn't it? I don't know, maybe. There. Was that a crow? Birds don't sing in the heat of the day. It might still be too hot at four in the afternoon. So even if you don't hear birds, it might be daytime. Do you feel the warm sun? I don't know. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. No. No, it's not warm. Listen. Was that a squirrel? Where? Now. There's a robin. I think so. No, I don't know. I I didn't hear anything. The squirrel chattering, don't you hear it? I don't know. You're listening too hard. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. You don't know what you hear. Oh, dear God, please. Paul. What? Pull yourself together. All right. You're letting it get you down. Brace up. Paul, whether you're blind or not... I'm not blind. You've got to get home. I'm not blind. No. But suppose... Suppose you were, Paul. I'm not. It's just... It's just my imagination. Then stop thinking about it. Stop thinking about it. And start walking. I'm walking. You're not blind. Force yourself to stop thinking about it. Don't think about it. Your mind is whirling. Stop thinking about it. Stop thinking. Stop thinking about it. Dear God, don't let me be blind. Please, please don't let me be blind. Stop. What is it? Listen. Do you 
you hear it? Yes. Yes, yes, I hear it. Do you know what it is? Yes, it's a car. Where is it? It's way, way off in the woods ahead of me. Is it coming this way or going away? Uh, it's coming this way. Now, now you'll know. Yes, now I'll know. Get off the road. Yes. Yeah. It's coming closer, isn't it? Yes. Wait for it. I'm waiting. It's coming closer now, isn't it? Yes, closer. What, what do you expect to see? Headlights. Do you see a glare in the sky yet? No. No glare. Why not, Paul? Why not? I don't know. Why no glare, Paul? I don't know. Curves. Curves in the road ahead. When will you see the lights, Paul? Soon. Wait? Yes, wait. How soon, Paul? Very soon. How soon? How soon? How soon? What is the fool doing driving on a pitch dark night like this without lights? The fool! The idiot! Driving without lights! Idiot! No lights! No lights! No lights! It's still broad daylight, isn't it? All this time, I... It's been daylight. Please, help me. Please. I'm blind. And that is the story of Paul Gallagher. You have just heard Charles Bennett's The Dark Hour, Attraction 13 on Radio City Playhouse. John Larkin was heard as Paul, Alan Stevenson as the voice within him. Other players included Eugene Francis, Hedley Rennie, and Helen Schultz. this performance, Radio City Playhouse rings down its curtain for the time being, but we hope to be back on the air again in the near future over most of these NBC stations. So please watch for the announcement of our return. Meanwhile, the staff of Radio City Playhouse, our producer-director, Harry W. Junkin, our composer-conductor, Dr. Roy Shield, sound technician, Jerry McGee, our skillful and resourceful engineer, Monroe J. Lawrence, and our supervisor, Richard P. McDonough, all join in saying thanks to you for your many wonderful letters, telegrams, and phone calls expressing your appreciation of our efforts. You've been very nice to work for. Saturday night, Hollywood Star Theater returns to the air. The opening show will star a talented and lovely young Hollywood actress, Marissa O'Brien. She will be introduced to you by her niece, a young lady known and loved by millions of theater goers, Miss Margaret O'Brien. Hollywood Star Theater will be heard over most of these NBC stations next Saturday night. This is Lionel Rico speaking, and this is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>